So, uh, yeah. So the uh, title of today's talk is building resilient and scalable serverless apps, right? I'm. I hope uh, you are all able to see my screen. Right. Yeah, I can see the screen. Yes. Yeah. So in this talk, we'll be uh, diving deep into the world of uh, serverless architectures and explore how the three factor pattern can revolutionize the way we build modern applications. And we'll also explore, you know, uh, some of the traditional architectures that are generally used and what are the challenges that you face when you move from a traditional architecture to more of a serverless and three factor architecture, right? And we'll examine the capabilities of Hasura uh, in, you know, as a tool which helps you bring GraphQL to databases and enables uh, event-driven business logic and how it can help you in uh, ha having, let's say, building a three-factor app as well. And uh, we we'll end with a demo uh, or roughly I'll, I'll show you how to set it up essentially, right? And uh, show you a small example of how you can get started with some of the core use cases of uh, three-factor architecture. So first of all, uh, uh, what is Hasura? So Hasura is a, it, it, it gives you instant real-time APIs, GraphQL APIs over your database, okay? So that's at the core what Hasura is. And it's uh, the business logic is event-driven and you, you can build modern applications with it. You can also fit it in uh, core applications. So if you look at uh, our GitHub repository here, uh, it has 30,000, uh, you know, stars and it, it's one of the few uh, applications and repositories from India, which has that, that many numbers. It's the highest count currently, right? Uh, there's a repository uh, like Freshworks, Beats, even Freshworks and Inmobile, things like that, right? So uh, we'll be leveraging Hasura's capabilities and developers can create modern applications without dealing with complexities of backend architecture therefore you know you can reduce your development time and improve your productivity right so let's see what uh, traditional architectures uh, look like and you know how we, how we can go serverless that will be the crux of it so traditional architectures have uh, generally served as well but they come with certain limitations especially when it comes to scalability and resilience in the age of you know uh, now, with, now that we have cloud computing and real-time applications, so uh, it, it, you run into limits much faster with the traditional architecture. And also, the other thing is monolithic architectures, which are um, the bread and butter of uh, traditional architecture. Uh, these struggle to handle the dynamic demands of modern users and their expectations for uh, real-time updates. Right. So we'll discuss the challenges of these and in some more depth and how they can become bottlenecks when migrating towards serverless environments. Okay. So, yeah. So you, you might think that, you know, uh, to go serverless, uh, I'll just, you know, host my web service on Lambda and it might seem like a very smart thing to do, but uh, it generally doesn't work uh, that well so simply and we'll see why uh, it, it can create problems, right? So what are the main problems with, uh, you know, traditional architectures? So number one is you have scalability, right? So traditional architectures are often tied to the scalability of the weakest link in the chain, right? So if you have um, multiple um, services within, in that chain or callbacks happening one after the other function calls, or it may be callbacks, right? So you have uh, the the bottleneck becomes the weakest link becomes the bottleneck. So when you move when you move to a serverless setup, this can lead to underutilized resources and unnecessary costs. The other thing is uh, resilience, right? So in traditional architectures, error handling and recovery logic can become verbose and challenging to manage, especially when dealing with distributed systems. So this is this reduces the resilience of the system, and also uh, in today's uh, time where you want to go to the market very fast, where you want the development velocity to be very minimal, uh, 
it's easy to in traditional architecture it's easy to build and prototype but they but they become very complex very soon and it's hard to iterate as the application grows so serverless offers a new way to approach development with greater agility and speed right so what is the solution um so moving we, we need to move towards scale and resilience so that is clear and uh, that those were the main problems with traditional architectures and we must have a new paradigm that embraces uh, both scale and resilience so we'll discuss the advantages of adopting an asynchronous approach for all these operations right while allowing components to operate independently and leading to better resource utilization and improved fault tolerance so going async is uh, the right solution we there is no other way around it but again it's complex so now you know these with these things in mind you know it kind of is setting the stage for exploring the three factor architecture pattern that you know that can sort of transform the way we build our applications for the cloud era right so introducing the app so uh, this is the three factor app right so there's we have hosted a website also you can look at it and um, it's uh, it gives you some basic examples and i'll go into the code also i'll share you the, share with you the code as well right so it, it provides a blueprint for building modern serverless applications that are efficient scalable and resilient all right so how it does this is uh, with three things let me come to that so the crux of the uh, the three factor app is that first of all it has real time graphql right what what it means is we'll be seeing how it simplifies the process of fetching and updating uh data in real time and making applications more responsive and user friendly so you can do simple state manipulations subscriptions mutations which are essential in solving the problem of how do i if things are happening asynchronously how do i you know make sure that i get the information back into my database right and the, uh, we'll explore the significance of a robust eventing system that allows uh, business logic to be triggered efficiently right when you're initiating business logic you want to uh, make sure it's very efficient and and you want to ensure that smooth data flow and consistent application behavior is maintained okay and um, finally like you want you will also see how we can deploy functions on serverless platforms enabling on demand resource allocation and seamless scaling without the overhead of managing uh, infrastructure okay so we saw how the traditional architecture is once again right this is how the traditional architecture is you have an app which talks to the back end api and th that in turn talks to the database and the multiple microservices that which may be inherent so first i'll show you what the three factor architecture looks like right so this is how the three factor architecture looks like it offers a systematic approach to building uh, these resilient and scalable serverless apps and we'll, we'll focus later on why also like bringing in real time graphql reliable eventing and async services we create a framework that sort of encourages agility responsiveness and uh, growth right so yeah here here you can see that the api directly talks to the database and then the async serverless functions are called so instead of it calling a microservice it becomes functional calls right so what are the main tenets of uh, three factor architecture so number one it is that it's a very simple api layer one of the key principles is that it is easy it should be easy to build uh, a, a simple and intuitive api layer that is easy to understand and use for both front end and back end developers and everything is derived from a pers persistent state what it means is that by ensuring that all data is derived from a single source of truth right in this case the database we can create a consistent and reliable application state all right next is that it's a, the eventing system itself is complex all right uh, we'll see the different complexities of eventing and also why 
you know by building a well designed eventing system you can drive a lot of you know powerful business logic which which is hard to uh, do it in a traditional architecture right and functional units of business logic okay so what do i mean by that is to create maintainable and scalable applications we'll discuss the importance of breaking down business logic into functional units all right so and these functions are deployed on serverless okay uh, so uh, th this helps with uh, all the things that we discussed so coming to serverless uh, so so these architectures have uh, gained popularity rapidly due to their uh, no ops nature eliminating the need for you know managing virtual machines or containers okay and if you are a developer you can focus solely on writing code and deploying it while the cloud pro provider takes care of the whole resource allocation scaling and maintenance and there are some advantages too we'll see how serverless when applied with three factor can give you the best results so this is a a uh, simple javascript function that is being deployed on serverless right so this gives an example you can try this out as well i'll uh, share the code with you and i'll share also share what the step by step process is for um trying this out so yeah yeah so, so coming to scalability right um so one of the major advantages of serverless architectures is their automatic scaling capability right which allows applications to handle varying workloads uh, efficiently all right so there is no ops there is no vms to manage you don't need to worry about scaling and you just have to focus on writing the code and deploying it and the scale is automatically managed so you are essentially decoupling components and utilizing serverless functions and applications can easily scale up or down depending on the demand without uh, manual intervention you must any aws user knows that you know uh, by trying uh, this with the traditional architecture you do get some of the benefits but with serverless you gain a lot more of the benefits of this independent scaling now let's look at uh, resilience right so uh, resilience uh, yeah when it comes to serverless architectures they are inherently uh, event driven uh, so this enables them to handle failures and retries efficiently okay and uh, also the events are uh, persistent so this ensures that no data is lost in case of failures and automatic retries ensure that the system uh, remains reliable okay so yeah so this can be so this serverless functions can be designed for both this for both resilience and scalability and they uh, recover gracefully from failures or errors all right so uh, i created a food ordering app uh, to show you so th these are some examples so there is the id which can be uh, a, a, like you know a, a pretty big uh, hexadecimal or it can be a, a string as well and then there is created at user id there are a bunch of uh, boolean flags that you need for uh, checking the status of the uh, application so this is the high level overviews right so to, to demonstrate the uh, practicality of this we'll talk through some of the application from scratch so here i'll share some architecture decisions that i made at each stage so see first of all it come there is the synchronous logic if you look at the synchronous logic this is how initially it would work this is the traditional architecture right and uh, this this is our new three factor arch architecture which is, which is asynchronous all right so understanding this difference is crucial to uh, see why we should choose asynchronous logic for both responsiveness and uh, efficiency so this is uh, the order flow right uh, you you have a new order which is uh, it validated paid and the status is checked and then we have the flow going to uh, to check the payments then there is approval of rest, rest you know the, the restaurant and then there is agent assignment and then there is completion so this talks about the general 
order flow that that is there right so um yeah so finally there is uh, the still one problem with this right so how do i uh, get my information back to the application so if everything happens asynchronously this is a problem right so it, it obviously possesses a uh, possess a challenge when it comes to retrieving data and providing real time feedback to the user but we'll we'll see uh, like you know the different approaches for handling asynchronous data and how real time graphql can, can play a key role in getting uh, asynchronous information back to the application so in, in the architecture that i showed you before i have not yet introduced real time uh, graphql right so that that is very important to solve this problem which is that you know for asynchronous events getting back the information to the uh, application so uh, this is very key so the goal is to create a seamless and responsive user experience while maintaining the benefits of async serverless components right so let's uh, see how you know real time graphql comes to the rescue right uh this is the you know uh, three factor architecture with real time graphql api so now you have the states persisted through the real time graphql row. all right so this makes sure that uh, whatever information is being sent it, it that's uh, the truth uh, you know at any point is ma maintained in the database state all right so this this graphql plays a crucial role in making uh server that serverless architecture both more efficient and developer friendly so the other thing is the flexibility of graphql allows front end developers to request only the data they need and this reduces unnecessary data transfers and enables performance so also the other thing is when you have this uh, real time graphql api during your development uh, the front end features that are getting developed can happen much more faster and they can they can they are not always dependent on the back end to catch up with them all right they can keep doing the development and they can release features much faster right and this uh, we'll also see how this solves the n plus 1 problem so n plus 1 problem is if you have uh, let's say you're making n, n calls then the n plus 1 call fails so that it deals with that problem as well which is a common challenge in traditional rest apis and we do this by batching and reducing redundant requests so this is how the graphql engine solves this so i wanted to show uh, this uh, repo also so the, the repo let me show you the repository so here this is the example app there is uh, I'll, let me also open the three factor uh, yeah so there is this is how the implementation is there is the whole code for this you can check this out okay and uh, there is the whole description here but uh, i also wanted to uh, do the st follow the steps and there is an example app so uh, the food ordering app that i had uh, showed you so i had built the code for it and i had deployed it so this is showing you you know how you can do it yourself as well so i've written some step by step guide and i've implemented it as well so you need docker you need uh, yeah so what i did is i first uh, installed a node and npm okay and uh, there is uh, the i i essentially connected the postgre i created a postgre sql uh, database and connected it with the docker and then i ran the docker command all right and this this is given there so if i have to show you the um uh, where is the one second ha huh, so this is the docker application that is running all right so i ran the application through this uh, where is the this thing yeah i i ran the application and it, it downloaded the required repositories and it and it launched the three factor app so now i'll go to the um yeah let me ha huh. 
so this is the data i basically what i did is i imported the data okay uh, i tracked all the data here and now i'm creating events so if i create a new event all right so this is an event trigger if i see, if i see, uh, i can create new event triggers and save it so this is for the validate order uh trigger right and you, you can see the i have added a webhook here as well so this essentially what it does is it uh, creates the flow for it to be able to execute the serverless functions and i'm not going to deploy the serverless function today so uh, that is not part of this to, uh, today's talk but you you can do that as well and if you have any doubts regarding that you can definitely reach out to me and uh, we can you know uh, talk about that so uh, that's all folks and there is a documentation as well you can check out the documentation here right there is the three factor app uh, example there is three factor and i write blogs as well you can check out my blog uh, i have written a bunch of articles on this and other issues like common issues like breaking up monolith with mo microservices etc right and uh, yeah so in summary right so this is essentially a uh, it 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 a three factor architecture what this does is it provides a systematic approach to building serverless applications that are both resilient and scalable and by adopting real time graphql reliable eventing and asynchronous serverless components developers can create efficient and future proof applications right so uh, if you are building a new app you should definitely try it out and finally also the synergy of if you are building a serverless application i would also suggest that try out hasura because the synergy of hasura and serverless technologies uh, empowers developers to focus on building impactful like front end experiences without compromising on uh, back end performance all right so yeah so that's all folks uh, thanks for joining and this is my uh, you can follow me on twitter or uh, you can connect with me on linkedin as well and uh, yeah i write uh, more about different technologies and uh, other futurist stuff as well so you can talk to me about that and uh, yeah thanks for joining thank you akshay uh, anyone has questions about graphql serverless or specifically three factor architecture so my own comment is very interesting uh, i have not heard of it before yeah so it was a, a good introduction but to really appreciate it or to understand deeper i think probably i have to look at the code and some examples yeah as i say right like you know if you actually try it out and uh, teach it you you learn the most so uh, i have used it uh, you know uh, even i understood it completely after i actually uh, built, built an application myself with it right so i would recommend the same thing and uh, if if you are into app development then definitely you know try it out and uh, any of you can also feel free to reach out to me regarding this and uh, i'll see how i can you know uh, tutor or mentor on that right yeah so one thing i didn't understand you used the phrase persisted event or something like that yeah well, can you explain that what is so that pers persisted event so what this means is that uh, let's say you create uh, an event and uh, that that event triggers some workflow that what whatever that it, it has triggered it has to be documented somewhere right it has to be it has to uh, sh show up somewhere so in in the traditional architecture that is not a problem because you are talking to you have multiple microservices which are looking at one particular function but in three factor architecture what what is happening is the database uh, the state of the database is more important so you need to persist these events all right uh, persisting events means you you are noting the state of state of that particular event in your database and you are using that to trigger workflows or check up on the workflows in the future so you gave an example of uh, like e-commerce example where there are four boolean values right 
like paid, ordered, something you showed in one example. So, so that, that is what you mean by state uh, persisted yes. in the database. Right. So that is one example of persistent database. So there is, let's say, validation, payment, yeah. approval, agent assignment. So all these are states and these are persisted and used to check the state of where the uh, order flow is. So instead of uh, you tracking the event flow with uh, where the callback is happening, you check the state you check the order flow depending on these persisted states so you get it right so instead of yeah, yeah. Seeing, instead of seeing where what the state of the event is based on the where it is in the uh, application wor workflow you actually use the state itself to check the state of the order in of the order flow so what you are saying is if i understand correctly uh these uh, serverless functions they are yeah. monitoring the state the database correct and when the state changes to something uh, then they uh, they it triggers the function correct correct okay okay so you can say database is like uh, database along with the real time graphql is like an alternative to kafka let's say to put it roughly Yes, because with Kafka also we build event driven systems. Yes, but instead of using that, we can use uh, GraphQL uh, plus this database for maintaining the, the state. You don't need the, uh, the queue at all. You, you, you can just use the database to. Yeah, uh, yeah. Check. right. Yeah. It's an alternative system. But queue gives you that function where things are ordered, like, you know, which message has come before which. Uh, how is that done in the database here? Something, some uh, timestamp is also used for that. Yeah, so timestamp, timestamp. Uh, so that usually is taken care of by the timestamp, right? You use the. I I showed that in the state. You can also maintain the ID, right? So the ID can be used to track the order as well. So, yeah. Okay, anyone has other questions? Please go ahead. Okay, no questions. Uh, okay, Nikhil, you have something? Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, uh, hey, Akshay, hi. Uh, nice yeah. presentation. Uh, good, uh, good thought around that. I wanted to understand um, uh, once we have this, right? Uh, this yeah. will be deployed separately uh, in our cloud in the sense we have to deploy it or it will be deployed on on the three factor um, server something like that. No, no, no. So uh, the three factor app uh, website that I showed you, right? Okay. It is the, just the implementation and details about the three factor method. So mm -hmm. you, you don't deploy it there. So you, can, you can deploy this in something like AWS Lambda or mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know as your right so that deployment process uh, remains the same what changes is the architecture and the you know event flow uh, okay yeah thanks man thank you so much yeah, yeah thank you. 